Good. Um, uh, well, good, good morning, everyone. And um, on behalf of the Agronomy Society of New Zealand, I'd like to welcome you to the, this first physical conference of the Agronomy Society since 2019. It's fantastic that we're all together again after an enforced break of three years and to be finally and to finally be in Invercargill after several false starts in getting here. Indeed, when the Agronomy Society was planning its field visits for Invercargill in early 2020, one thought was to visit the oat milk factory at Makarewa. Of course, we quickly realised that the factory was not due to open until after the original 2020 Invercargill conference dates. However, I have to say that sometimes during the subsequent two years, we did wonder if the factory would be open before the conference was able to take place. But anyhow, it's great to be here. It's great also to be joining again with the New Zealand Grassland Association for our joint conferences and to be joining with the New Zealand Animal Production Society for the first time. This brings together those with an interest across the pasture, crop, animal continuum, which I'm sure will result in a wide and interesting range of presentations and field visits. Plus, I suspect some lively discussion both during the sessions and breaks, particularly with the recent government's announcements around Hiwaka e Kanoa, which we've already heard a little bit about this morning and the potential impact. So this is, the, of course, the primary sector climate action partnership. The aim of this is, of course, to reduce agricultural greenhouse emissions and build the sectors resilient to climate change, but um, we've already heard the talk this morning from Jacqueline Roweth and, and some, perhaps some alternative thoughts on that. However, the, the theme of climate change was to the fore a few months back when the Agronomy Society marked 50 years since its founding in 1917. This was marked with a symposium on environmental impact and solutions for arable and horticultural production systems. Topics covered in the, in, in the symposium provided insight into the New Zealand agriculture, how New Zealand agriculture can continue to contribute to the world's food and nutritional security sustainably and with the theme of, uh, of um, sorry, and the theme of sustainability with options for the diversification that will add value and profitability to New Zealand agriculture. From the feedback, the symposium was a fantastic success. The success of the symposium was, of course, due to the work of many people in particular. The, the Agronomy Society Seed Symposium Organising Committee. These were Edith Kahemba, Amy Dawson, John Hampton, Robert Southwood and Murray Craighead. The, the symposium organisation was always undertaken with enthusiasm and positivity despite the uncertain environment. Indeed, as one of the symposium organising committee pointed out, they in effect organised the symposium three times. But despite this, the dedication in pro to providing the best possible symposium to celebrate 50 years of the Agronomy Society never waned and I think the result was a true credit to those efforts and that positivity in creating a symposium which unfortunately I wasn't there but from all reports was a great event and something to really mark our first coming together at the end of COVID as well as 50 years of agronomy. So as I said the symposium was an event that the Agronomy Society can not only be proud of but was also a wonderful way to mark 50 years of the Agronomy Society. At the same time though, it does pose a challenge to the society. How can we as a society continue to build on the success of the symposium in the past 50 years? Just to give you some background, for those of you who are at the symposium, you may not have some of these figures already, but since its formation, the Agronomy Society has enabled the publication of 928 papers from its conferences and 13 special publications on topics ranging from Lucerne as the first special publication in 1982 through to potatoes, various cereals, legumes and seeds, adding another 310 papers. So that's nearly 12, around 1,200 papers in total. And it's interesting too to note that um, the very first issue was reprinted several years ago as a result of renewed interest in Lucerne 
as a crop. So this is a timely reminder that why we need solution, why that new solutions will undoubtedly be needed for the challenges posed by a farming environment that is likely to be warmer and drier in the future, some of the solutions may also be found in work already undertaken. Just as a reminder, the Agronomy Society was founded over 50 years ago with the aim to promote the advancement of scientific research and practice of agronomy in New Zealand and to encourage the flow of agronomic information. As I mentioned in my opening remarks um, for the symposium, I'm sure that when the Agronomy Society was formed in 1970, the founders would not have imagined that the world would be so dramatically affected by a global pandemic, with cities closed down and travel around the world virtually halted. But what they could perhaps have told us was that during the pandemic, agriculture would, in most countries, be considered an essential services and all efforts made to ensure that food continued to be produced and moved as a priority. This aim remains as relevant as ever in a world that needs to feed a projected 9.8 billion people by 2050 sustainably. In addition, we have sadly seen, the war, with the war in Ukraine, how vulnerable the world's food supply can be to events other than climate change. In his foreword to the first Agronomy Society proceedings published in 1921, P.B. Lynch, who was director of the field research station of the New Zealand Department of Agriculture, closed with the comment that the Agronomy Society should fulfil a vital role in the development of agricultural research in New Zealand. I believe that this aim remains as relevant as ever, and perhaps even more so in the international context where new species may be needed in response to the drier and warmer environment predicted and to contribute to the reduction of greenhouse gases. As a society, we must continue to contribute to the research environment by supporting research and enabling dissemination of research that will contribute to finding solutions to challenges such as climate change and a growing world population that only needs to be fed, but to be fed with food that is high, of high nutritional value. The recent symposium held um, to mark 50 years is a good example of how the society can contribute to the dissemination of knowledge. But I'd like to make a challenge to you here today. I'm sure that there will be similar symposium in the future, as well as the annual Agronomy Society Conference, but other activities such as field days need to be considered. So over the coming two and a half days, if you have any ideas of how the society could engage in its task, its aims, please talk to me or any of the other council members, Emmanuel, who's here. Um, we're really keen to hear your feedback and ideas of how we can grow on the success of the 50th anniversary symposium of 50 years of agronomy. Uh, one thing that has also changed in the last 50 years is the world as we know it is far more interconnected than when the society was founded. We can communicate with people on the other side of the world virtually instantaneously. That may or may not always be a good thing, rather than the days or weeks it previously took. Similarly, our ability to send and access information both within and beyond New Zealand has changed dramatically, and the ways we can do it have changed dramatically. At the symposium, some participants joined online. This was the first online attendance and has the potential to expose the work of the society to a much wider audience. But at, at the same time, there was a strong in-person attendance, around 172 people in attendance at the symposium. My feelings from the physical meetings that I've been to since travel and physical meetings again become, became possible is that many people want and are very positive and very enthused about returning to physical meetings and there's a strong desire to have them in the future. But how this will continue to develop after the, I think what we should say was the euphoria of people coming together after nearly two and a half years, sometimes three years of not being able to meet physically. I think we need to think about how this will develop in the future and how future events will be developed. Will they be physical? Will they be online where possible? Or will they be a combination of both? 
I would like, also like in this address to, to take the opportunity to remind you that the Agronomy Society is active on social media, in particular Facebook. Agronomy Society of New Zealand is our Facebook page and Twitter at nz-agronomy is our Twitter handle. So these platforms are another effective way of connecting with members and reaching with people of an interest in agronomy outside the membership and hopefully initiating membership in the society. However, these platforms can only be effective if there's a continual feed of information. So I'd also like to ask you if during or and beyond the conference you see something, come across some content that would be suitable for either of those platforms, please send these to Amy Dawson and for you, those of you who don't have her contact details, I can give them to you and she will aim to upload them Within, with, with both the, within both those social platforms. Um, so we come together to, for these two and a half days to of course go on field trips, but also to presentation of research as part of the aim, the role of the Agronomy Society. So at the, big, at the end of this um, address, we'll begin presentations of research submitted to the Agronomy Society in 2020 and 2021. So, um, we're really a little bit in catch-up mode because, of course, the conferences in those years were not possible. Um, but some of those papers are already available on the Agronomy Society website under 2020 to 2022 journal papers. Um, I think what's really interesting for me about the Agronomy Society and, and, and what we receive is that the papers and the presentations cover a wide range of topics. So for 2020 and 2021, these included um, topics from seed production and seed treatments, um, potential new crops, forage crops, and the management of nitrogen and other crop imports such as water and magnesium. And I think for me the diversity of topics is one of the strengths of the Agronomy Society in providing researchers and practitioners the opportunity to share their work across a wide range of agronomic topics and at the same time bring this wide group of people together. Uh, one important uh, discussion that will be held in the Agronomy Society at the a annual general meeting that will occur at 5.30pm on Wednesday is whether we should continue to pr print the Agronomy Journal, Agronomy New Zealand, as a hard, as a hard copy. Um, I think this is a significant discussion for the Society because from the very beginning of its existence it has always printed proceedings as a membership benefit and distributed that to the membership. Now that doesn't mean that the society has to continue to do that. As I've already said, the way and means of communications has changed dramatically since the Agronomy Society was founded. But what I would like to see is before any decision is made whether to continue or to stop printing Agronomy New Zealand, that there is wide input from the membership into that discussion. So if you, I would therefore urge you to come to the AGM to participate in that discussion. I'd also like to draw the attention to the fact that for all of its existence, the Agronomy Society has relied on voluntary labour for most of its activities. Without this dedicated people, pe group of people, some of whom sadly are no longer with us, we would not have celebrated 50 years of the Agronomy Society, nor would we be having a conversation of how we can build on the success of the last 50 plus years. I would like to take a moment to thank those who, past and present, have given their time freely to the Agronomy Society and acknowledge their contribution they have made to agricultural research and dissemination of that research in New Zealand. Over 1,200 papers and an annual conference every year until 2020, when glo the global pandemic made a conference impossible, is an achievement everyone who contributed to the Agronomy Society can be justifiably proud of. However, there is future work to be done. So I'm again asking at the conference that you discuss how the society can continue to deliver on that mission first enunciated by P.B. Lynch in 1970 of the Agronomy Society fulfilling a vital role in the development of agriculture research in New Zealand. And again, a reminder that the Agronomy Society annual general meeting on Wednesday will not only discuss 
the journal, but it will also elect a new council. So if you would like to become more directly involved in contributing to the growth and development of the new society, please consider standing for council. So in closing, I'd like to wish you all a great conference with the opportunity it provides to listen to speakers, discuss the issues raised and possible solutions across the pasture crop and it will continue and combined with field visits, including the three organised by the Agronomy Society, Trifle Tulips, the Old Distillery and Blueberry Country. These visits have been put together for us by Nicole Morris. I thank Nicole for all the work she has done in organising the visits supported by the local organising committee for the conference. I would also like to thank the New Zealand Grassland Association for once again inviting us to join with them for their conference and the considerable work undertaken by the local organising committee, um, as the name suggests, for organising the conference on behalf of all three organisations participating. They've put together a full and varied program which I'm sure we will all enjoy very much. So in closing, I look forward to talking to you during the conference and seeing you at the annual general meeting. Thank you.